welcome to Haunt Talk. That's Kim. This is Josh. I'm Kristen. Today we are going to be reviewing the Haunted Hoochie in Columbus. Yep. We're always kind of crammed in here for this video. Decided to just let Kristen uh, help us out with this one. I'm usually just the entertainment when we're going through yeah. the haunted houses mm -hmm. and falling over and stuff. We'd, uh, we thought we'd let her talk. We'll see if that's a mistake or not. <laughs> <laughs> um, so no. Uh, yeah. So Haunted Hoochie. Uh, you know, they're one of the haunts that are known for being pretty extreme and stuff like that, which I feel like their name of being an extreme haunt has sort of fallen with, like, all of, like, the things like Scare Houses, The Basement, or, like, McKamey Manor, and that kind of crap, because they're nothing like that, you know, you're not going to be, like, torture porn while you're in there, which is, in my opinion, a good thing, because <laughs> I think there's a difference between haunted houses and then whatever that is, I don't even know what you would yeah, call it, Tor no. just real-life torture porn, but, I mean, hey, if that's what gets you off... <laughs> Fun. <clears throat> oh, um, yeah, so Haunted Hoochie is definitely a, um, not for snowflakes kind of place. Yeah. Um, yeah, you definitely <sighs> are going to have, um, issues if you don't like, you know, devil worship <laughs> and, uh... Who people don't like that? Beast demons and, and all that fun Jesus jazz. Christ. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> um, yeah. So Um another thing because this isn't a really part of the haunt, um, in line, let's we'll, we'll just talk about the queue line for a minute before we start getting into all of the, you know, categories. Um there is a like um well how do you because they're not really strippers because you're not stripping. Uh, they have a go-go dancer yeah. cage. Um, and they switch out. Um, there was one that had nothing but little pasties on her nipples and a tiny little, like, um, s swimsuit bottom on. Uh, at one point, a nun was in there spanking her because that's what you do. Uh, they also have a projection screen, which they usually play music videos on, but then every, like, 10, 15 minutes or so, they have some political propaganda type of stuff. Like, uh, there was about a 5 to 10 minute long segment of just, um defacing George W. Bush, just, uh, just completely, like yeah, uh, it was a bit much, I don't really know if I, like, I, not that I really here nor there with George W. Bush, I don't really care either way, I'm not real into political things, but I'm like, well, that's, it's a little bit tasteless, but I guess the theme of the place is tastelessness a little bit, um, it didn't really bother me, but I could definitely see that pissing a lot of people off, and, uh, if they piss you off, believe me, they're winning, because that's obviously what they want. But you kind of know that going into it. And that's probably something you're going to see if the line's long, because it's going to play for you, and you're going to be like, okay. <laughs> thing. They had a guy kind of walking through the line. I believe his name was Phoenix on Fire. Something like that, Something yeah. like that, and he was pretty cool, just kind of messing with people, pulling their hoods down. But he did give us a little show at one point when the line was stopped with the fire. With the fire, he was like fire, yeah, fire eating and stuff. Mm -hmm. That was pretty neat. Yeah. There was some kind of mechanical problem that went down, and we ended up waiting in line for almost an extra hour, I think it almost ended was up Was that being. it? Was it a mechanical problem, or were they just, like, taking a break? We think it was. What we heard people saying was it was a mechanical problem. Because at first I thought maybe they are doing a break, but it lasted so long, I don't think that's what it was. We aren't 100% sure. It was kind of annoying, but didn't really ruin any of the, the experience, I guess, for us outside of that. I saw an animatronic inside the house that was not doing what it was supposed to be, so I'm assuming that yeah, was the issue. Might have um, been. It didn't look like they got it fixed, so they just were like, "Well, screw it, we'll just open up anyway." Um, but yeah, they uh, they had us waiting quite a while for that. Yeah, but um, I will go ahead and uh, get into the categories and actually start reviewing the place, though. So first things first is uh, the sets and props. Um, Haunted Hoochie is. Pretty much, like, I would say they're probably, like, definitely top of the industry as far as, like, sets and props go. There's really no other place that, like, compares them or at least beats them, I would say. Yeah. It's just every single room is sensory overload. I mean, from going into, like, a war zone that kind of felt like you were watching, like, inside a movie, like it was in, like, Vietnam or something, to walking into a real airplane... And, and I emphasize it, it was a real frickin' airplane. I've been in airplanes before this was real. Um, and just the animatronics, they had set up so well that they weren't just, you know, an animatronic in a room. It was like the whole room was set up, and then there was this thing that attacked you, you know. Um, just really, really well done. Really well done. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so for sets and props, we gave them a 10. And they deserve it. Yeah, there's just, just scene after scene after scene of um, stuff. <laughs> there is, there is, um, there is a lot. The next category is actors. Um, they do touch you in this haunted house. They, I don't know if they actually tell you that. The only reason I knew is because Josh told me. And um, it first started off just kind of someone kind of pulled me into a room and pushed me out. I'm like, okay, whatever. They kind of, you know, touch, like play with the hair on the back of your neck or they come out of walls above you and like touch your hair. And I'm like, okay, fine, cool. But it gets pretty intense at some point. At one point, someone literally grabbed the back of my neck, starts manhandling me and touching me with his chainsaw. Mm -hmm. And then another guy, I mean, he y yanked me over. I was pretty sure I was going to have bruises after that and have a machete to my neck. Uh, Josh, I think, got the brunt of it. Yeah, story time. Um, <laughs> so they have this um, demon birth scene where essentially, and I don't remember, do you guys remember if the person on the table was an act, was an actress or not, or was it just a dummy that was on the table? It was an actress. Okay, so there's an actress on the table, and she, like, you know, had recently given birth, and there was the guy that had taken the baby. The baby was still attached to the umbilical cord. He put me into a light headlock, put the baby, <laughs> children close your ears, onto his crotch, and then rammed me in the butt with it. <laughs> I got raped by a baby. That's a thing that happened. You got spanked by somebody. I got I got spanked by a knife. Well, I pretty it stung a bit. Um, yeah, the chainsaw people. They were really rough with me. There was some lady like, and she's just wearing like a bra and like panties, all covered in like some kind of muck. I uh, also don't wear white here because our friend was stupid enough to wear a white hoodie, and he got blood on his back because they grab you and they have blood on their hands and stuff. Um, yeah. Places that actors are uh, the actors are pretty intense. The thing I would say improvement wise for actors is um there's not there wasn't a lot of dialogue, I guess. Um it was mainly just them grabbing you. The couple that did have dialogue um were okay, but it's mainly just things like threatening you and swearing at you because you know that's kind of their thing that makes them intense. Saying the swears. Yeah, like there was a nun in the uh the devil church that was basically calling us a bunch of fucking fornicators. Yeah. Which was lovely. <laughs> Um, but yeah, there wasn't much other than just yelling and just manhandling you. Yeah, but, um, they were really intense though. And like, there's, they were just everywhere. There was all, there was, oh. the only places I would say there was a couple, um, shortages in actors was fine because I was like, please God, stop grabbing me for a minute. <laughs> so like, I didn't really mind because I mean, they're not, there's not many. I'd say maybe there's about three little, little kind of like lols. Maybe you went 20 seconds without being grabbed or groped or shoved or yelled at. So, yeah. I mean, it was pretty nonstop. Um, you know, and they kind of, it's kind of one of those ones where they're kind of pumping you through and, you know, the whole way through, it's all people. It's a line of people, but it's so intense and people coming from every angle that it didn't even matter. I didn't even notice that right. that's what was going on. It's, yeah, it was. It worked for them. Right. So, for actors, we gave them a 9.5. Yeah, they were. They're really good, really good, and really um, grabby. <laughs> <laughs> so for scare factor, um, that's our next category. This place was pretty scary. I mean, they do pop out of everywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, places you wouldn't expect them to be, and like you're always on alert because this place is just so intense. I went through most of it ducking down. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was behind you. I saw you the whole time. You're just like. Oh, all right, where's it going to come from next? Because grabbing my hair. <laughs> you were the entertainment neck. this time. Yeah. So for scare factor wise, um, they did really well on that as well. We gave them a 9.5. Because again, they were just everywhere. Grabbing you from above, below, behind, just everywhere. And also stuff that like, um, you might, I mean like maybe you'll find offensive, but I guess could also like be considered like kind of terrifying to people. Like, I mean the opening scene, and it's been the opening scene for as long as I know for the last few years has been the guy killing himself, which, you know, like maybe you'll find that offensive. But I mean, like I said, if you get offended easily, this is not a place for you to go. But there's also kind of like almost like really horrifying dark comic relief. There's a guy that was having sex with a chicken. <laughs> that was pretty good. I was cracking. Well, I think it was a robotic chicken. Um, yeah, and I was just like, okay, that's, that's a thing. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, it was pretty, it's pretty intense, pretty intense. There's just kind of people everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> grabbing you. So, um, that brings us to value. This place is $25. They do offer, um, a speed pass. How much was a speed pass? 
I want to say it was 10 bucks more. I'm thinking that it's 10 or 15 dollars more, I believe. And I would say on busier nights, you probably would want to do that. I think you also get, we haven't actually, I don't think we've actually mentioned, you get the Bad Trip in 3D Haunted House, which we kind of just have described it as a palate cleanser because it's really short. It's only probably like five minutes long. Yeah. It's not real long. And like the props that are in there are pretty cool. And there are actually some decent scares in there, but it's nothing compared to the main haunt. Like not even close compared to the quality at the main haunt, but still. A nice, a nice little addition. So I'd say, like, in total to complete both haunts, you're looking at about 25 to 30 minutes. I think the hoochie's, like, the perfect length. I wouldn't want it to be longer. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we gave them a 9 for value because, I mean, you do get two haunts. You get entertainment um, while you're waiting. And, like, it, it's basically, you know almost sensory overload they just give you so much and it, it's a really good value mm -hmm. overall score we gave them a 9.5 it's really good it's really scary it's a lot of fun i think i was just smiling through the whole thing because it was so much fun yeah it is you know, it is it is a lot of fun especially if you can like if you're not someone that gets offended easily like you just have to understand that all of it's kind of just like the more ridiculous stuff isn't meant to be taken like seriously it's just you know if you're a fan of, you know, if you're a fan of horror, you really like the, you'll really like this place as well. Um, cause there's just, it's very grindhousey. That's yes. what it reminds me of. It's like a grindhouse movie. Yeah. Um, the only thing that I wasn't a big fan of is, uh, is there's like, I think there's two of them, but we missed the first one and that's kind of irritating. And the second one, mm -hmm. um, we had, we got gummed up in a hall because there's like a couple scenes in the haunted house you have to like wait to go into, but it ended up just kind of like keeping us in this hallway for a couple of minutes, just like shoved in there is right outside of the vortex tunnel too, which is inconvenient to go watch a guy like cut someone's head in half. And like the effect was kind of cool, but I would have rather it just been able to walk through and maybe something else be there. Same with the first scene, which I think was someone like decapitating a clown or something like that. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's cool and all, but like compared to the other stuff that's there, I just don't think it's necessary anymore. And since they pump people through, everything else works with that method of just pumping people through groups of 20 or so at a time, but this part just didn't, that, yeah. those two just didn't work. But besides that, the place is absolutely fantastic. And if you're in the areas, you for sure should check it out. And also Carnage while you're there, because that place is due and also good. That concludes this episode of Haunt Talk. Uh, don't forget to like our Facebook page. If you haven't subscribed yet, I don't know, understand why, <laughs> why? Um, make sure you click that little button here on YouTube. Um, don't forget to check out our Patreon page. We'd like to be able to bring you more content throughout the year rather than just around Halloween time. Uh, it takes five bucks. That's all we're asking for you. It would help out greatly. Um, don't forget to uh, do all that stuff. Share with your friends. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye. Bye.